Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and talk about these image properties. The first thing that you need to be aware of is the invert. And the invert is what it says, it says what it does. If we go ahead and click on it, it just inverts our image. And if we render that out real quick, you'll see that we have our colors inverted if it's a color image. And if it's not a color image, if it's a black and white image, it'll flip your black to white and your white to black, and all the grayscale values will get flipped. That is just about as basic as it gets. The next thing that we need to be concerned about here is if we're dealing with a PNG or some other type of image format that supports alpha channels, you can actually load different types of maps in the alpha channel. It pretty much has to be a grayscale map. And then you can say alpha only, and what it'll do is it'll pull the information from the alpha only. This can be useful, and I'll talk more about that when and where it would actually pop up. The next thing is interpolation, and this is one of those things where it's designed for maps that are kind of low quality with JPEG artifacts and stuff like this. All the maps that I'm giving you here are very high quality. They're not going to need any kind of interpolation if you're really okay with that. One of the reasons why I would say is you wouldn't want to use it is because it tends to blur things, and the other thing is it tends to slow down your renders. So. My attitude is I leave it off and I just use better quality maps. Brightness, okay, well, brightness, if you increase the brightness, brighter, decrease the brightness, it gets darker. So not exactly a big deal there. Contrast, well, when you start to increase the contrast, what you're effectively doing, depending upon the map that you're working with, is you're creating more of a separation between these two areas or how many ever areas you might have in your given map that you're working with. If you lower the contrast, you're basically bringing everything towards gray. And as a matter of fact, if you lower the contrast all the way down, you'll pretty much always end up with the same thing, neutral middle gray, which is not very useful. Generally speaking, you almost always, if you're going to touch this slider, you're going to increase the contrast, not decrease it. Although there are some instances where you might decrease it. If I wanted to say make this the spectrum here darker and I also wanted to make it a little bit more of a break between the two I can do that by adjusting the brightness and the contrast until I get the gradient that I want and let's go ahead and render that out so you can see so you can see we're getting a very different result here even though it's the same map because we're able to edit these settings here inside Maxwell these are really basic basic, basic, basic image editing functions you'd find in just about any image editor. The last one is saturation, and this one's probably one of the more useful ones. This one allows you to take a color image like this and remove all of the color information and be left with just the grayscale information. And this can be useful sometimes when you're trying to create a black and white map from a color image. The other way that this can go is you can actually increase the saturation. If you have a desaturated image and you're looking for a way to kind of boost up the colors a little bit, then that's a way that you can do that. So what I'll do here is I'll kind of modify this guy so you can really see some big shifts. All right, and we'll render that. So there we go. Now you can see it's way more saturated. We've got a lot more variation in what was previously a fairly smooth gradient. And that is all done with the image editing part of this application. One thing that is worth knowing about all this, and I'm just going to set all these back to zero, which is the default state, this RGB clamp. Well, what is the RGB clamp? This is basically saying that anything that falls below this number is going to be set to this number, and anything that falls above this number is going to be set to this number. So if I set this to, say, 128, for instance, you're going to see that everything is kind of squeezed down into this range between 128 and 0. Now, how do I know that? Well, if I hover over here, you can see, if we look down here, there's a little readout. And as I hover over, none of my values are going above 128. So if I set it for, say, 80, and then just click off, you'll see now none of my values are going above 80. Let's go ahead and set that back to 255. And let's go in the opposite direction here. So let's set it for something like 80. 
what will happen is everything is going to be pushed towards the brighter end of the spectrum. And we'll go even higher here. We'll go something like 180. So you can really see it. There you go. So see how everything is being pushed. And because these are fairly middle values, everything is being pushed right out of the range that we wanted in. So let's say I want to do something like only colors between 180 and 200. So now everything is between 180 or 200, and I can tell that by just hovering my readout, and I can see I'm getting some 200 up here, but nothing but 180 and 200. So you can control precisely how you're clamping your RGB values utilizing those two functions there. These last functions here, this is to load your image. This is to remove your image. This is going to blow up your preview here so that you can see a little bit more full size and, and be able to do these adjustments in sort of a, a more fine-tuned scale. This is going to allow you to reload an image. Let's say you edited this PNG in Photoshop and you want to see the edit that you made. Well, you can just hit refresh and that'll reload that image so that you can see it. And then finally, this is actually going to decrease the size of my little thumbnail here. I almost always, as soon as I open up Maxwell, I, I almost always just go ahead and launch that on whatever computer I'm working on because I can't stand looking at this little thumbnail. I find it to be just about the most ridiculous thing ever. I almost always just activate that right away. You're probably on your system going to see it like this, which is, like I say, just kind of a drag. So just tap on that and leave it that way. I, I don't really see the point in, in having it any other way. Down here is a little drop down, and this drop down is going to tell you all the images that are loaded in this particular texture. And you can pick from whatever images you have loaded. And then this final little bit here is the size. And this is telling me the actual pixel size of this image. And right now we're dealing with a 1024 by 1024 raster graphic image. That is basically more or less how we interact with maps in Maxwell as far as the actual little image editor and manipulator that we have here when we launch our little map editor.